हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा गुरु महाराज कैन यू हियर मी या आई कैन हियर यू कैन यू हियर मी ओके यस गुरु महाराज प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माय हम्बल ऑबिसेंसेस गुरु देव ऑल ग्लोरीज टू सी अप्रोच प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माय हम्बल ऑबिसेंसेस ऑल ग्लोरीज गुरु महाराज ओके वी कैन बिगिन ओम ज्ञान तमरंदनाशलाखाया चक्षुर्मीतन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमती भक्ति स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवारी पश्चाचारिणे वंशकुभ्य कृपा सिंधु पतिथनाम भवान्ेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवास दिगोर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे So this evening we're going on to chapter number nine, the most confidential knowledge. Today, we are going to listen to the most confidential knowledge. Right? You can see here. Are you going to listen to it? We ask everyone who is uh, listening to the class. You can please mute your microphones. Until it's time for questions, and then it won't disturb us. Uh, Projer mute Gar Gardinos la. Look, sir, I'm just about to hear Dino la. Go all the way to the mute karate. So the first verse of the ninth chapter begins. Lord Krishna is going to describe knowledge more. Most confidential, the most confidential knowledge, right? This ninth chapter is Raja Vidya. So there's different kinds of knowledge. We've had confidential knowledge, which is there in chapters two to six, which gives knowledge of the matter and spirit, or the difference between the body and the soul. And then chapter seven to eight, we're giving oh. we're giving more confidential knowledge because it was describing about the nature of. Lord Krishna and his energies, and it was introducing us to devotional service. But now, in chapter nine, we have the most confidential knowledge, and Lord Krishna is going to explain to us. About pure unalloyed devotional service, and he will describe how Lord Krishna, Lord Krishna will describe how he himself reciprocates with his pure devotees. Ah, 
และในบทที่9นี้เนี่ยเราจะเ,เรียนรู้กันในส่วนที่ในส่วนที่เรียกว่าความรู้ที่เป็นความลับสูงสุดนะคะหรือว่าสุดยอดนั่นเองนั่นก็คือเกี่ยวกับกระชั้นจะอธิบายเกี่ยวกับการอุทิศตนเสียสารับใช้แบบบริสุทธิ์แล้วก็แบบไม่มีคิดจำกัดเนี่ย so, เป็นยังไง so this ninth chapter is the very heart of the Bhagavad Gita it's right in the middle and it's the very heart of the Bhagavad Gita เพราะฉะนั้นบทที่เก้าเนี่ยถือว่าเป็นหัวใจสําคัญของพระกฏกิตาที่อยู่ตรงกลางแล้วก็มีความสําคัญนะ This middle section from chapter 7 to chapter 12 is emphasizing devotional service so it's a very important part of the Bhagavad Gita เพราะว่าในส่วนของบทที่เก้าเนี่ยเป็นส่วนที่จะเน้นถึงการวิตตนเสียสารับใช้ที่บริสุทธิ์เพราะฉะนั้นถือว่าเป็นบทที่มีความสำคัญมาก Yes Go ahead Alright So here's the, the second verse from the, the ninth chapter This knowledge is the king of all education the most secret of all secrets It is the purest knowledge And because it gives direct perception of the self by realization, it is the perfection of religion. It is everlasting, and it is joyfully performed. ในสรุปที่สองนะคะบอกว่าความรู้นี้เป็นราชาแห่งการศึกษาเป็นความลับสูงสุดในความลับทั้งหลายเป็นความรู้ที่บริสุทธิ์ที่สุดเนื่องจากสำเนียกได้โดยตรงเกี่ยวกับตนเองด้วยการรู้แจ้งซึ่งเป็นความสมบูรณ์แห่งศาสนาเป็นสิ่งนิรันดรและปฏิบัติได้ด้วยความรื่นเริง So Raja Vidya, the king of knowledge, just like a king, this knowledge is supreme, just as the king is supreme in the kingdom. So this knowledge is the highest knowledge. เพราะฉะนั้นสรุปนี้นะคะเราจะมีคําว่าราชวิทยาอยู่นะคะราชวิทยาเนี่ยแปลว่าเป็นราชาแห่งการศึกษานะคะหรือราชาแห่งความรู้นั่นเอง Then Lord Krishna said it's Raja Guya it's the most secret of all secrets the knowledge just like a king may have a treasure and he may have many uh, people also helping him So he will be. He will keep it confidential about how much wealth he has in his treasury. Um, he won't tell everyone about the value of all of his treasure. So the same way, this knowledge from the Bhagavad Gita, this is very confidential. It's meant for the devotees. แล้วก็ความและในท่อนที่สองเนี่ยบอกว่าราชบุญยังนะคะซึ่งหมายถึงเจ้าแห่งความรู้ที่ลับเฉพาะนะซึ่งหมายความว่าเออในจมูกเราเป็นกษัตริย์ใช่ไหมคะกษัตริย์เนี่ยก็จะมีทรัพย์สมบัติอะไรอย่างนี้เนี่ยมากมายแต่ว่าทรัพย์สมบัติที่กษัตริย์มีเนี่ยไม่ใช่ว่าทุกคนเนี่ยจะรู้ได้ตรงนั้นเนี่ยมันจะเป็นความลับที่จะมีเฉพาะบางคนที่รู้เพราะฉะนั้นเหมือนกันอันนี้นะคะความรู้ที่กษัตริย์จะให้ดังต่อไปนี้ก็การที่ต้นเสียสารับใช้เนี่ยมันก็เป็นความลับที่ไม่ได้เปิดเผยให้ทุกคนให้เฉพาะสาว And Lord Krishna is describing many of the qualities of devotional service in this verse. For example, he says, "It is the perfection of religion. It is everlasting, and it is joyfully performed." แล้วตรงนี้เนี่ยในสรุปนี้กิชนาก็อธิบายถึงการวิตตนเสียสารับใช้ลักษณะการของการวิตตนเสียสารับใช้นะคะว่าเป็นยังไงก็คือมันเป็นความสมบูรณ์แห่งศาสนาแล้วก็เป็นสิ่งที่เป็นนิรันดรแล้วก็ปฏิบัติได้อย่างมีความสุขโดยด้วยความเรื่องเรื่อง So joyfully performed you can see for example in the picture the devotees chanting the holy name they're happy they're very joyful in the practice of Krishna consciousness one is one should be joyful one should not be morose When we think of the body, we become depressed. We become unhappy. But when we understand ourselves as a soul, we become joyful. 
ราะฉะนั้นตรงนี้เนี่ยสามารถปฏิบัติได้อย่างมีความสุขเดี๋ยวสามารถดูในภาพนี้ได้นะคะปฏิบัติได้อย่างรื่นเริงเพราะฉะนั้นถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยปฏิบัติตามการนุ่ยตัวเสียสารับใช้ที่ถูกต้องถูกรูปแบบเนี่ยคือผู้ปฏิบัติเนี่ยจะมีความสุขและมีความรื่นเริงเขาจะไม่มาไม่มีความเศร้าโศกหรือมีความทุกข์อะไรใดๆกับเรามาถึงโอเค we'll go ahead Ruth here you can see how devotional service can be performed by so many different kinds of people in seemingly unusual situations for example looking on the left on the top left you see an example of of one asura who is described in Srimad Bhagavatam and this asura's name was Vritasura and he was a great devotee although he was in the body of a demon he was a great devotee <laughs> ก็มาดูการปฏิบัติการวิตนเสียสารับใช้แบบในรูปแบบต่างๆนะคะรูปภาพแรกเนี่ยเราจะเห็นมารตัวนี้นะคะมารตัวนี้เนี่ยชื่อวิกรสุรัสซึ่งจะมีเกี่ยวบรรยายเกี่ยวกับเขาเนี่ยในสุริมาบวตามิตรนะคะคือเขาเนี่ยเป็นมารแต่ว่าเขาเนี่ยเป็นสาวก So people are surprised Oh demons can also be devotees Yes sometimes people are born in demonic bodies but they're devotees แล้วบางคนอาจจะสงสัยว่าเฮ้ยแต่ว่าเขาเป็นมารเนี่ยเขาเป็นสาวกได้อย่างไรคะเพราะฉะนั้นบางครั้งเนี่ยอาจจะเกิดในร่างของมารแต่ว่าแต่ว่าเขาเป็นสาวแบบนี้ก็มี And look at the bottom picture you can see the elephant Gajendra he's also a great devotee and he's offering a prayer and Lord Vishnu is coming to save him so even in an elephant body he can be a devotee และรูปภาพทางด้านล่างนี้นะคะถัดลงมาเป็นรูปภาพของช้างช้างตัวนี้เนี่ยชื่อเดเจนดรหลังจากที่เขาได้รับความทุกข์ทรมานเขาก็จะเรียกนะคะพวิสนุนะเขาก็เป็นสาวกแม้ว่าเขาจะอยู่ในล่างช้างเนี่ยเขาก็สามารถเป็นสาวกของพระผู้เป็นเจ้าได้ and look at the middle two pictures we will see on the top middle picture you see the embryo this is child Parikshit who is in the womb of his mother and He he was protected by Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu came to protect him from the heat of the Brahmastra weapon. แล้วก็รูปภาพของเด็กน้อยในคันมารดานี้นะคะเขาเนี่ยก็ได้รับการปกป้องคุ้มครองจากพระวิสนุหรือกระชานนั่นเองนะคะจากอาวุธที่ชื่อว่า Brahmastra นะคะที่เขาเนี่ยโดนทำลายเป็นระเบิดอันใหญ่นะแต่ว่ากระชานก็มาปกป้องคอย And we also hear in the Srimad Bhagavatam. How some some children, when they're in the womb of the mother, they pray to Krishna. They pray to Krishna to let them out of this condition, and they will promise to worship Krishna. แล้วในสิ่งที่บอกว่าตรงก็จะมีบรรยายนะคะว่าเวลาที่เด็กเนี่ยเวลาที่เด็กอยู่ในคันมารดาเนี่ยเขาเนี่ยจะจะมีการปกป้องคุ้มครองจากพระวิสนุหรือกระชากรรมาปกป้องคอยแล้วก็ในสิ่งที่บอกว่าตรงก็จะมีบรรยายนะคะว่าเวลาที่เด็กเนี่ยเวลาที่เด็กอยู่ในคันมารดาเนี่ยเขาจะได้รับความทุกข์ทรมานมากแล้วเขาจะได้เขาจะปรารถนาว่าขอให้เขาได้ออกมาเถอะแล้วเขาจะทำ So, so even in the womb, child can be a devotee. And here we see in the bottom in the middle picture, how one at the time of death he can also be a devotee. ลูกภาพข้างบนนะคะนั่นหมายความว่าขณะที่อยู่ในท้องเนี่ยก็สามารถเป็นสาวกได้ค่ะและลูกภาพทางด้านล่างนี้ก็หมายความว่าขณะตายเนี่ยเราว่าเป็นสาวกได้ Yesterday we told the story about Ajmila, the Brahmana who became fallen. But he had a son called Narayan. So this is the Ajamila. He's chanting the name of Narayan. So at the time of death, he was saved from the Yamadutas. And then over on the right, we have on the top here. We have. Bharat Maharaj, who had renounced everything to go away to the forest, and he's worshiping Krishna in the jungle in the mountains. The part of the bottom, this is how we have Janak Maharaj, which he had renounced everything and went to the forest to do Krishna. And here in the bottom picture. He, this is the, the, the future life of Bharat Maharaj. 
he is called Jadbarat and he is actually pretending to be a, stu a stupid person and he's carrying the palanquin of the king and he pretends he's very stupid but actually he's a great devotee. So you can see, you can practice bhakti, devotional service can be performed by anybody. It doesn't matter what their material situation is, it doesn't matter what kind of body they have, it doesn't matter whether they're young or old or what. Anyone can perform bhakti. Okay, so we were saying a demon can become a devotee. So this is the story about Vritasura, which is described in Srimad Bhagavatam. Now, Vritasura in his previous life, he was a great devotee called Chitraketu, but he got cursed by Lord Shiva's wife. He came to Lord Shiva's ashram and he saw Lord Shiva with his, he was embracing his wife at the time and Lord Shiva was sitting in front of many other sages and saintly persons. So Chitraketu was surprised that Lord Shiva, who was supposed to be very renounced, was embracing his wife and he laughed at Lord Shiva and so his wife, Lord Shiva's wife, got angry and cursed him to become a demon. มีเหตุการณ์หนึ่งนะคะภาษีวะก็เหมือนนั่งบรรยายธรรมอยู่แล้วในขณะที่ท่านนั่งบรรยายธรรมเนี่ยก็มีก็ภรรยาเนี่
after he swallowed Indra, he sat down and he went into Samadhi and then he went back to Godhead. So you can see even demons they can be great devotees. We have to be very careful in dealing with everyone. We don't know who's a devotee. Go ahead. Next. All right. So Lord Krishna, nine three, yes. Lord Krishna is describing in this verse who is qualified to do devotional service and who is not. They said, those who are not faithful in this devotional service cannot attain me, O conqueror of enemies. Therefore, they return to the path of birth and death in this material world. So faith is a very important quality which we have to have to do devotional service. And we get faith by associating with nice devotees. And we also get faith when we read the books about Krishna consciousness. That also helps us to develop faith. And when we practice the process of Krishna consciousness, we will also increase our faith. It will give us more faith when we practice the process. Go ahead. All right. Text number 11. Lord Krishna, you know, hearing about Lord Krishna and feeling so happy in devotional service, we heard in devotional service, we get so much pleasure, so we wonder why people don't surrender to Krishna. <laughs> So Lord Krishna describes here, he said, when they see when they see Krishna in a human form, they think he's a person just like they think he's an ordinary person, just as they are ordinary people. They don't understand he has a transcendental form. Of course, if they had, if they were able to see Krishna in four arms, like Vasudeva and Devaki in the bottom picture, they see Krishna in its forearm form. Then they can understand, oh, he is a very special, he is not an ordinary person. So to understand Krishna, you have to have faith and you have to you have to engage in the process of devotional service, 
then Krishna reveals himself. So people who think Krishna is an ordinary person, they're described like this as being very stupid. Yeah, go ahead. So the, there are different types of people. Some people worship Krishna and some people don't worship Krishna. You can see in this picture uh, Lord Krishna is on the top with his pleasure potency, Srimati Radharani. And on the bottom, on the bottom left, you have four kinds of people who never surrender to Krishna. And then over on the right, you have four kinds of people who are pious who do surrender to Krishna. So everyone according to their nature they will get their particular reward. Some people will be some people they think of God as impersonal. They think of God as simply an energy. So they will enter into the impersonal effulgence, the Brahman. Some people worship the yogi, the paramatma in the heart, like the yogis, they meditate on the super soul in the heart. And some people are atheistic, they don't accept that there is any God. And, and some, some people are dim, demons, they may worship other demons. If, some, if somebody can, somebody may be very demon, a big demon, but if he can help us make a lot of money, then people will worship him as a very great man because he's helping me make a lot of money. So materialistic people think like that. So we see pious people, they come to Krishna, some come, come in distress, somebody is in search of wealth, somebody is curious, and somebody wants knowledge. So we should understand it's not the same for everyone. Everyone, according to their nature, they're going to get a different kind of reward or put in a different place. It's not all one, it's not all the same. Yeah, go ahead. So now Lord Krishna is describing the pure devotee. You can see the word 
Mahatma there, Mahatmas, the great souls. Mahatma means great souls. So Mahatmas are there doing this Ananya, Bhajanti Ananya Manasa. They're, all, they're always engaged in devotional service. Lord Krishna describes the activities of these Mahatmas. And he, Lord Krishna describes, we'll read the verse, O oh, son of Prita, those who are not deluded, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine nature. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, original and inexhaustible. So the devotee, these Mahatmas, they're very special devotees, they're fully dedicated to Krishna consciousness. Mahatma, Pendu, Yakuji, Lahan, Kautit, Krishna, Yakuji, 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 and their purpose in worshipping the demigods is to get some material enjoyment. And it may be that they want to go to the heavenly planets to enjoy there. Uh, you can see in the illustration above that there are five demigods and above the five demigods is Lord Krishna. Right? And the different five demigods are there. First there is Lakshmi on the right and then there is Vayu, and then there is the Sun God, and then there is Indra, the Rain God, and then there's uh, the Moon God, Chandra. In this way, there are many demigods actually. There are 33 crore demigods. So these demigods are all servants of Lord Krishna. And their worship is told in the Vedas. But the purpose of worshipping them is to satisfy Lord Krishna. So if people worship the demigods understanding that they're servants of Krishna, then there's no harm. 
But if they worship the demigods independent of Krishna, then they get some purification, they can go to higher planets, but they won't go back to Godhead. เพราะเขาเนี่ยทํางานทํางานเพื่อกฤษณะเนี่ยอนันต์เป็นการบูชาแบบของมีความเข้าใจที่ถูกต้องแต่ถ้าเกิดว่าบูชาเราเทวดา
And Krishna says, I personally take care of whatever they lack, whatever they need. So it's a, a very transcendental relationship. The pure devotees meditating completely fully on Krishna and Krishna is taking care. Is Krishna able to do that? Isn't it too much for him? Yeah, Krishna can do it. He's, he's doing so many things, but he's so powerful. He can also take care of his devotees. We may wonder, is it, well, can Krishna really take care of it? Yes, Krishna wants to do that for his, it's his service, he likes to please the devotee. Now Krishna is describing that if you worship other people, then you will go there. If you worship the demigods, you will take birth among the demigods. If you worship the ancestors, you go to where the ancestors live. And if you worship ghosts and spirits, you take birth there. But if we worship Krishna, then we can live with Krishna. <laughs> Some people think it's all one, everything goes the same place, everybody goes, but Krishna doesn't say that. Krishna says, you, you worship this people, you go to that place. It's different for each person. It depends who you worship, where you're devoted to. So some people go to heaven, and some people come back here, and some people go down into the lower region of the universe. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So Krishna is describing the power of Krishna Bhakti. When we do Bhakti devotion for Krishna, we get the greatest mercy. As we said, Bhakti, Krishna Bhakti is, is very easy. Anybody can perform it. Young people, old people, women, children, everyone can do it. Krishna Bhakti is a very when somebody is not educated, no problem. Everybody can chant Hare Krishna, they just have to learn the Maha Mantra. Everyone, let everyone anywhere, they can all chant the Hare Krishna mantra. It doesn't matter what nationality or what religion or what birth we have, everyone can take to Krishna Bhakti. Yeah. 
Go ahead. So here's the famous verse from the ninth chapter. Lord Krishna is describing how easy it is to worship him. We don't need to have a lot of paraphernalia. You can offer Krishna a leaf, a flower, a fruit or water. So it's not that Krishna is greedy for our offerings, but he wants our devotion. So we can see in the verse he's mentioned devotion twice. So whatever we have, whatever we offer to Krishna, we must offer it with pure love and devotion. That means we must be pure, we must be clean, we want to offer something to Krishna, we should not be contaminated. And, and if the offering is satisfactory, Krishna says, I will accept it. He says, Ashnami, he says, I can eat it. Whatever we offer, Krishna can eat it. So this verse is describing to us how easy it is to do bhakti, to do devotional service. Of course, some people may say, I don't have any bhakti, I can't do it, I don't have any devotion. So, the next verse will describe what you can do. Krishna describes, whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer or give away, whatever austerities you perform, do that, O son of Kunti, as an offering to me. Yeah. Whatever you do, this is karma yoga, you see, you're off, what, whatever you do, you do it as an offering to Krishna. And whatever you eat, before you eat it, you first of all offer it to Krishna. And you want to offer something or give away something, then do it for Krishna. And austerity, if you like to do some austerities, we do it for Krishna. Just like today's Ekadasi, so we do fasting on Ekadasi, we don't eat beans and grains, and we do more chanting, so it's an austerity. And we do it for Krishna, for the pleasure of Krishna. So this is, this, we heard first of all, you could do pure devotion. This is a little lower than pure devotion. This is called karma yoga. 
จะยังไม่ถึงระดับการรู้จนเสร็จแต่รับใช้นะคะเพราะอันนี้เนี่ยจะเรียกว่าคาร์มาโยบาก็คือทำกิจกรรมแล้วก็ถวายผลของมันให้กับพระเจ้า It's a little easier than bhakti yoga because bhakti yoga you must have real devotion. But by doing karma yoga, then we will develop real devotion. Go ahead. All right. This is the final verse of the ninth chapter, and this is the the most confidential knowledge. This is, and Krishna is saying how to actually do bhakti yoga. Yeah, he said, think of me, use their mind to think of Krishna, become my devotee, offer obeisances, and worship Krishna. Four things, four ways we can worship Krishna. So this is the most confidential part of the knowledge of the ninth chapter. And Krishna will repeat this verse again in the 18th chapter. He will mention again these four things. So, this is about the demon Vishwamitra, the Vishwarup, the big demon. We saw the picture of that demon Vishwarup. So, he was created by. From the sacrificial fire, he was created by the, the, the priest who did the yagya. That priest, yagya, the, the priest doing the yagya's name was Twasta, and he performed the sacrifice. He wanted to kill Indra, and he created the big demon with the purpose that the big demon would kill Indra. So this Brahman Twashta, who was doing the Yagya, he chanted the mantra in a wrong way. He made a mistake in chanting the mantra. He wanted to chant the mantra to create a demon who would kill Indra. But instead, because he made a mistake in the mantra, what happened was he produced a demon of whom Indra was the enemy. So you can see a little mistake, a little mistake in the pronunciation of the mantra, and the whole mantra, the whole yagya went wrong. So 
But we don't have to worry about this in chanting the Maha Mantra. Even if our pronunciation is not very good, not very perfect, it doesn't matter. The important thing is the devotion. Some, sometimes some of the words in the mantra are difficult to pronounce and some different countries, different parts of the world, they pronounce the names in different ways. Just, we see Russia, in Russia, the Russian people, they would say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And in, Chi Chi in China, the Chinese people have difficulty to say Rama, they would say Roma, Roma. And they say Ali, Ali Roma, Ali Roma, because we don't have the R, we don't have that R sound in the Chinese language so much, it's difficult. But but still, there's so many wonderful devotees in these countries, in Russia and in China. Wherever you go, you find wonderful, wonderful devotees. Just like myself, I'm from Europe, and our European language, we speak English, we don't speak we, we cannot really pronounce the Sanskrit very nicely. Mm. There was one, one lady devotee, she told Prabhupada, I've learned to recite all the prayers in the Ishopanishad, and Prabhupada was very happy. And so he had to recite, and there was a big audience at a program, and Prabhupada asked her to come and recite the Ishopanishad prayers to the audience. So when she said all the prayers, one man said, Oh, her pronunciation is not very good. <coughs> แล้วเสร็จทีนี้เนี่ยเอ่อสาวท่านนั้นก็มาบอกเซอร์ฟอนเพราะบางครั้งดิฉันจับสลบของเอ่อซีซอร์ปานิสัตได้แล้วค่
We want to make our heart a nice place for Krishna to sit. Go ahead. Go ahead, Arjuna. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, go back. Go back. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you can see here, some people may say, they make an excuse when we ask them to chant. They say, well, I'm too young. And somebody else says, oh, I, I, I'm in love just now, I, I, you know, we're in love, I don't have, we don't have time to chat. And somebody else says, we're very busy. And then somebody else says, I'm too old. And then at the end, too late, the person dies. <laughs> ปฏิบัติธรรมะอะไรแสดงว่าเจ้าบอกว่าอ๋อตอนนี้ฉันยังเด็กอยู่เลยอายุยังไม่ถึงยังไม่ทําก็โตมาสักพักนึงบอกโ
พราะฉะนั้นอย่าอย่าอย่าให้เวลาเสียไปแบบนี้โดยปรประโยชน์อย่าโง่ให้แบบว่าให้ฉลาดให้ช่วยโอกาสเก่อนโอเค any questions Yes, g u r m a h a s from Shaya. Uh, she raised her hand. Yes, Shaya Mataji. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Abi Shaya, s h a l e h a Hare Krishna, g u r u m a h a r a j Dhanava Pranam. Please accept my humble obeisances according to s i r a p a b u p a n อาจารย์ครับพี่มีความสงสัยที่เรื่องมานที่เป็นสาวกอะทีนี้ถ้าเกิดว่ามานเป็นสาวกแล้วเนี่ยกิจกรรมของเขาจะเปลี่ยนไปหรือว่าอะไรอย่างไรคะเพราะว่าเห็นเขาว่าเขาก็สู้รบกับพระอินแล้วก็กินพระอินขึ้นไปอะไรเงี้ยที่ก็เลยมีความสงสัยว่าอย่างนี้ถ้าเกิดว่ามานตัวอื่นเนี่ยมีเป็นแบบอุทุตนเสศรัลับใช้ด้วยอะไรเงี้ยแล้วมันจะมีเขาจะมีพฤติกรรมของมานอยู่แล้วมันจะมีผลกระทบไหมอะไรอย่างเงี้ยคะมีความสงสัยตรงนี้อยาให้มหารัฐอธิบายให้ฟังหน่อยค่ะโอเคขอบคุณค่ะอาริกิชนะกุลมาชาคุณถามเกี่ยวกับเรื่องของวิทรัสุระที่คุณเล่าเมื่อกี้คุณบอกว่าเขาเป็นสมาชิกในรูปแบบของดวงจันทร์ดังนั้นเมื่อเขาทำกิจกรรมอะไรเขาก็ยังทำกับพระอินทร์และเขาก็กินพระอินทร์อะไรแบบนี้ Something like that. So that is how uh, the demons they act, and uh, and he also have the devotion at the same time. So his behavior doesn't change uh, if he have a devotion. So how how do we understand this? Well, he has devotion. I said whatever devotion we have, we can never lose it. So even though he was cursed to take his body of a demon, he still had his devotion. So when he was fighting with Indra, he would preach to Indra, and he would tell Indra, you know that you sh that you don't have to be attached. You know, don't be attached to winning or losing. We're all servants of the Supreme Lord. ก็คือเหมือนกับที่คุณมาราธิบายนะคะก่อนหน้านี้ก็ถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยมีการวิจารณ์เสียสละรับใช้แล้วเนี่ยความวิจารณ์เสียสละรับใช้หรือบ็อกซี่ของเราเนี่ยจะอยู่กับเราไปในทุกบุชาใช่ไหมคะเหมือนกันมานตัวนี้เนี่ยถึงแม้เขาต่อสู้กับพระอินทร์อยู่ก็ตามนะคะเขากําลังทําการเผยแพร่พระอินทร์เขาจะบอกว่าพระอินทร์เธอเนี่ยอย่ายึดติดกับตําแหน่งของเธอเธอไม่ควรที่จะมีความยึดติดแบบนี้เขาก็คอยแบบว่าสอนพระอินทร์อยู่ So he was when he was fighting with the demons he would tell them you know don't be cowardly do your duty we're acting all, we're all servants of the supreme lord everyone suffers and enjoys according to their past activities it's our karma เขาจะบอกไปว่าเธอเนี่ยยังไงต่อสู้ไปเธอก็ไม่ต้องยึดติดว่าเธอจะชนะหรือเธอจะแพ้หรอกทุกอย่างเนี่ยมันก็ขึ้นอยู่กับกรรมเพราะว่าเราเพราะพระผู้เป็นเจ้าทรงได้ลิขิตมาแล้วว่าอะไรจะเกิดขึ้นกับเราต่อไปเพราะฉะนั้นเธอไม่ต้องกลัวเธอไม่ต้องยึดติดเธอมาต่อสู้กับเราเนี่ยเขาก็สอนแบบนี้ไปเลย understand So the the point is to see that even in the, we don't judge a devotee just by the body. That even somebody is in the demon body, but still his heart, his consciousness, is devotion. สิ่งที่เราจะเรียนรู้ได้จากตรงนี้ก็คือการที่เราเนี่ยไม่ควรตัดสินสาวกบางคนเนี่ยอาจจะดูเหมือนกับว่าโอ้เหมือนมาเลยเลยแต่ว่าความจริงเนี่ยภายในเขาภายในใจเขาเนี่ยเขาอาจจะมีความอุทิศตนแต่มีบ็อกตี้อยู่ที่เราไม่รู้หรือเราไม่เห็น And when Indra was fighting him, Indra didn't like to fight him because he thought he's such a great devotee. How can I fight with this devotee? 
ตอนแรกเนี่ยพระอินทร์เนี่ยก็รู้สึกไม่อยากจะต่อสู้ด้วยซ้ำเพราะว่าคิดว่าวันนี้เนี่ยเป็นสาวกแล้วข้าเนี่ยจะไปต่อสู้กับวันนี้เป็นสาวกอย่างนี้ได้ยังไง Indra was surprised that he was such a big devote big demon but he was so devoted แล้วก็เอ็นพระอินก็ยังเกิดความงงอยู่ว่าโอ้เป็นมารเนี่ยแต่ว่าเป็นสาวผู้ยิ่งใหญ่ขนาดนี้ but the demon kept encouraging him no he said don't be afraid he said just go ahead fight me kill me he said that when you kill me then I'll be free of this demon body and I can go back to serve the supreme lord แล้วเขาก็บอกพระอินด้วยนะบอกว่าเออไม่ต้องกลัวมาต่อสู้กับฉันเลยมาถ้าเกิดว่าเธอชนะได้นะฉันก็จะเป็นอิสระจากร่างมารนี้สักทีหนึ่งแล้วก็ฉันจะได้กลับไปหาพระผู้เป็นเจ้าอะไรเขาก็จะเขาก็บอกพระอิน So the demon was, but he didn't mind Indra killing him because he wanted to get free of his demon body. And he knew the next life he's going to go to serve the supreme lord because he was within his mind. He was thinking of the supreme lord. ไปที่ที่เขาจะได้รับใช้พระผู้เป็นเจ้าเพราะว่าชาตินี้เนี่ยเขาระลึกถึงพระผู้เป็นเจ้า So he was put in the body of the demon just to finish off his karma. He just had a little bit of karma, so that demon body finished off all of his bad karma, and then he could go back to Godhead. ความจริงเขาได้อยู่ในร่างมาเนี่ยเพื่อให้กรรมไม่ดีของเขาเนี่ยหมดสิ้นไปพอเขาไปอยู่สักพักหนึ่งพอกรรมไม่ดีหมดสิ้นเนี่ยเขาก็ได้กลับไป Yeah. Do you want to go back to Godhead, Shaya? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for your um, advice, Hare Krishna. Do you want a demon? Do you want a demon body to finish off your karma? No, <laughs> I need mm, this body is okay, but I need to. I need Krishna to destroy my karma and mm, even my last life also, and come back to Him. Okay. Good. Okay. Who else has a question? <laughs> you, Guru Maharaj, Shri Krishna. Three more. โอเคคงคงสวัสดิ์โรจิเชนค่ะครับอ่าผมมีข้อสงสัยในข้อในสรุปนี้คือนะครับว่าอ่าถ้าวิชาการวิชาเทพใดหรือว่าเทวดาอง
Well, well, these planets, first of all, be, be, before, before the, you go to Mahaloka, Tapaloka, Janaloka, to go up there, they, these are very, very high planets and you have to be very, very pure to go up there into these planets. But there's the heavenly planet, Swarga, heaven, and that's where the demigods are, they're in the heavenly planets. Uh -huh. โอเคเพราะฉะนั้นดาวเคราะห์ที่พูดถึงเนี่ยมหาโลกาจันทร์โลกาเนี่ยอันนี้เนี่ยเป็นดาวเคราะห์ที่สูงขึ้นไปอี
There's many, many planets in the spiritual world for different devotees. So some people have a relationship with Vishnu and some people are devoted to Krishna. So Krishna's devotees, they go to Goloka Vrindavan, but Vishnu has many different places and the people will go there according to which particular form they worship. Even Krishna, Krishna has like Lord Chaitanya, he has, so then there's Lord Chaitanya, he has a place in the spiritual world. Lord Rama, he has a place in the spiritual world. And some people worship Lord Nisringadev, he has a place in the spiritual, they have, each have their own places. ฉะนั้นนะคะในโลกพิมพ์เนี่ยก็จะมีมีทั้งโลกไวกุณฑ์ชาราไวกุณฑ์ชาราก็คือโลกของภาวิสนุสําหรับสาวกที่แบบว่
and they listen to lectures all the time. So you just have to engage your mind, keep your mind absorbed. Mm. Mm. All right, good. I'll continue just with that, with determination. And I just have to accept that the mind is supposed to do that till however long it takes. I'll just continue with that. Yeah. As it is. All right, good. Thank you. You, get, you have to get the mind to do what it doesn't want to do. You know, that's, that's also helpful. You get the mind to do what it doesn't want to do. The mind doesn't want to chant. The mind doesn't want to hear about Krishna. The mind doesn't want to worship Krishna. So you do all the things. When your mind says, don't do it, you should do it. You don't listen to your mind. Mind is like a wild animal. You have to beat the mind, and that's how you beat the mind. You get it, you make it do what it doesn't want to do. With this, uh, Buddhist Rapopat book, one of them he says that even if you require to talk to your mind and tell it that what it's doing is wrong, and you know, if you really want to fully enjoy it, chant the holy name. That is what I do. I've been doing since years ago, and uh, the mind is relaxed. It focuses a lot on chanting, but again, if your job is to get distracted, ah, <laughs> it continues to get distracted again. Yes. No. Yeah. So when the mind gets distracted, then you, your lips, your lips should curl with distaste, and you can spit at the thought. Right? Alright, yes, yes. You just have to keep practicing. You have to be determined. You're going to do it. Mm. We give the example, you know, about the woman in the villages in India. They carry all these pots on their head. You know, you've seen these. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the, the woman, sometimes they dance, but they carry all the pots on their head. Yeah, yes. So where is their concentration when they're carrying these things on their head? Mm. Mm. Their concentration is on the pots, right? Because they have them on their head. So they have to concentrate on these pots. It's the same way devotee, we have to concentrate on Krishna. Krishna in the heart. Mm. Just imagine you're carrying pots on your head. Mm. Good idea, Prabhupada. Thank you. Okay? Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, Yuna Madhiji, what's your question? Oh, Archana, translation? อัมมาดีนะฮะก็ทําถึงเรื่องการควบคุมจิตใจนะฮะเพราะอย่างที่ <laughs> ฮะกุรุมาราก็บอกว่าให้ให้เราเนี่ยเอามันกลับมาฮะก็บอกจิตใจให้มันกลับมาโดยที่ไม่ต้องฟังมันนะครับเราต้องชาติที่ประเทศอินเดียเนี่ยจะมีหญิงสาวที่เขาจะถือหายนะคะเขาจะสามารถวางหายหลายๆหายเนี่ยบนหัวได้แล้วก็จะเต้นได้ทําไมเ
Хари Кришна, Гуру Махарадж, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Сила Пакупада. Гуру Махарадж, I have a question, off topic for the class, can I ask? Yes. Гуру Махарадж, Адри Дхарана Прабху spoke to me that he and Кирти Даматаджи, they want to translate some of your lectures, and I will be editing a video with the Russian translation. Uh, we have already done 18 days of the Bhagavad Gita in this way, and Rama Navami uh, we have uh, just finished. Guru Maharaj, may I ask your blessing for this book? Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you have a question? No. <laughs> no. Uh, Only oh. that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Sri Devi Madhiji has a question. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. My question, Guru Maharaj, Guru Maharaj, is regarding verse number four of the Shiksha Shtakam. How am I, as a woman, supposed to relate to this verse? Because it's about uh, no desire to accumulate wealth, I can relate to it. Uh, I cannot relate to no desire for beautiful women because I am a woman myself. I always wonder about these kind of verses in our prayers. Could you please explain, Guru Maharaj? Thank well, you, Guru Maharaj. Well, when it talks about women, then you should think about men. You don't want to be praised by men. You know, whatever it says for women, then you just reverse uh -huh. it. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, understand now. <laughs> because we are, we are married women, so you cannot desire other men. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. understand now. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Archana? โอเคมาคําถามของมาดารีนะคะมันจะก็ถามว่าในศิษฐาสกรรมสรุปที่ 4 Okay. So thank you very much, Archana, for your translation. Thank you very much. Thank all the devotees for participation. And we'll see you again on Friday night. Yes, good day. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Jai. 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 J